we are reminded that we are to be full of joy on this day as we focus on the Christ who reaches out and reaches for us. Amen? Amen. Will you join me for the call to worship? When all we have hoped for and trusted in has let us down. When the world seems dark and despair threatens to close in upon us. Come and let us worship the Lord who is always ready to reach out to us. Amen. The morning hymn, Jesus, keep me near the cross. The hymn number 301. affirm our faith together with the affirmation of faith, Hebrew number 881. When you find it, please say amen. amen. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried, the third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From this he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. 
I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Gloria Patri. Good morning, church. It's good to be in the house of the Lord one more time. I'm grateful to God for all of his many bountiful blessings. Amen. As we continue to see more and more people come out to the house of God, we, we're grateful that God have allowed us to assemble one more time. This morning in prayer, we want to remember uh, the Curry family, continue to pray for them. The Johnson family, continue to lift them up. Uh, Jocelyn Stewart, we thank God that she's home. Uh, and we just glorify God for his goodness and mercy. I thank God uh, for our brother Larry Claiborne. I, I'm saying Jocelyn, I mean Janice. I, I'm, I'm looking at the sister's face, amen. Uh, Janice, amen, she's home. And I'm um, grateful to God for all of his blessings. I want to remember Brother Larry Claiborne in our prayers and, um, and ask that God uh, give him speedy recovery as he go through the throughness. Also, I want to um, thank God for my friend, um, Sister Joyce Purley uh, from Bell Rose. Amen. Um, she's in the hospital, but God is able um, he's doing amazing things. Uh, it's such a blessing to see the blessings of our Lord and Savior. If you have any prayer requests, just lift your hand and you can state them all around the building. If you're following on social media, if you have a prayer request, you can enter it now. Also, the altar is open. For those that want to come and kneel, you can come at this time. The altar is open. We can't always get to the altar, but Lord, I have a I have something I want to bring to you, and I want to bring it to the altar, and Lord, I want to leave it there. I want to come to this altar on today thanking God for, first of all, salvation for his son Jesus, for coming, suffering, dying, being buried, rose again, now sit on the right hand of God all for you and myself I, I thank God for all of his blessings but through the throughness of life we're gonna face issues and problems adversities but sometimes we just have to give them to God if you have a problem and you say this is bigger than I am some things we can cast the devil out in the name of Jesus but some things are bigger than us the Bible says that when that happened with with Daniel, he had to call on several angels. He called on uh, two angels, and he says, I need a warring angel. I need Michael on my side right now. And if that's you on today, and, and this problem or adversity is larger than you, you can come to this altar and give it to the Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus. Shall we pray? Spirit of the living God, 
we thank and praise you God for everything that you continuously do for us even when we don't deserve it we stop by today oh God to tell you thank you thank you Lord Lord we pray that we live in that song thankfulness is a lifestyle thankfulness Lord despite what happens I must still praise you I could complain but I won't I'm going to still thank you Lord now we want to ask that you would be with us walk with us talk with us oh God continue to share your nature with us oh God give us instructions on what you would have us to do oh God that we may continue to be the eyes, the hands, and the feet of Jesus Christ. Father God, we don't take it for granted. You didn't have to, but you did. You keep on making a way out of no way. God, you keep on doing it over and over and over and over again. So God, we can't help but say thank you and glory to your name. We praise you for who you are on today, oh God. Lord, we pray for our children and our children's children. Father God, be with them, watch over them, guide them, protect them, oh God. We bless you, God. We bless you on today. We may have a little pain in our body, but we still thank you on today. We may, have, we may have had to come in on a walker, God, but we still thank you. Back pains and knee pains and hips, oh God, but we still thank you. God, now we ask you, God, to look over those in Ukraine today, God. And as they travel throughout this earth, we pray, God, that you will continue to be with them, lead God and direct them. We pray, God, that you be with us, God, as we pray for them. Today, God, we, in this month of birthdays, in this month of April, God, this first Sunday, we lift up the children of Ukraine, God touch on only you know how to touch bring healing God bring deliverance God in the mighty name of Jesus those concerns that are before this altar and on social media right now God we touch and agree with them believe in God that you can do anything but fail God the problem that's bigger than us oh God we turn it over to you today. We turn it over to you today. And we'll leave it here at this altar. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. And amen. Jesus. 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 That name Savior Jesus
One more time, choir Jesus. Come on, choir. I want to hear Jesus. Call on him. Call on him today. Jesus. There's something about that name. Master, Savior. Savior Jesus Yes God Call on in church Jesus put those hands together and give God praise. Amen. Can we have church today? Yes.
All right. house since before she died and I went amen and I didn't die I remember her I love her and I know you all do too I don't know why y'all can't get on your feet with this song I believe in miracles if I could still walk in here and talk in here come in here and direct this choir the best of my ability I believe in miracles and you should too I know God has performed a miracle for you I know he's performed a miracle for you God make a way out of no way. Keep living. Amen? Amen. 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 Will you join me for the prayer of illumination? Lord, open our hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit that as the scriptures are read and your word proclaimed, we may hear with joy what you say to us today. Amen. The scripture today comes from Philippians chapter 3 verses 13 through 16, and I'll be reading the New Living Translation. And it reads, No, dear brothers and sisters, I have not achieved it, but I focus on this one thing, forgetting the past and looking forward to what lies ahead. I press on to reach the end of the race and receive the heavenly prize for which God, through Christ Jesus, is calling us. Verse 15 says, let all who are spiritually mature agree on these things. If you disagree on some point, I believe God will make it plain to you. But we must hold on to the progress we have already made. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.
Hallelujah. The Lord is good. The Lord is good. Uh, where's my church? The Lord is good. And all the time? I think a few people believe it. Just a few. The Lord is good. Oh, that's the church. And all the time? Yes, God. All the years he've allowed us to see Amen. in a season where death is all around us, God is good and worthy to be praised. Thank you, Lord. I want to talk today from the subject. What's it, what does it mean to press on? Paul tells us that you got to keep moving. He says, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing that I do. You see, he said, I may not be good at a lot of things, but one thing I'm good at. I'm forgetting those things which are behind me. Uh, you see, there's some good things to forget, and there's some good thing, uh, some bad things to forget, and some good things to remember. He says, "I don't count myself to have all of these accomplishments." He said, "You may look up to me, but it does not mean anything." He says, "I only look at praising my God. I count not myself." You. It's not about the degrees. It's not about how much money you make or where you live or what you drive. It's about making sure that your focus, that our focus is on doing God's divine will. I'm forgetting those things which are behind me and I press. Do I have any presses in the house? Toward the mark for the prize. You see, the prize is not in material things. The prize is in achieving divine destiny. Amen. Some things we need to forget. And I, I um, being United Methodist, the, the United Methodist Church didn't start with an originator that were well-polished. Matter of fact, um, it says that in the mid-30s, 1730s, that is, Peter Bowler was a young German Moravian Christian. Now, John Wesley was an Anglican priest. And John and his brother Charles went, came to America. They um, did some work in Georgia. And how many of us know that he didn't catch a flight to America. <laughs> Amen. He had to come by way of boat. And so uh, when you travel the waters like that, it took anywhere from four months to eight months to get here. And so you can't turn around and say, you know, I've been to America twice this year. No. <laughs> no, you was in the water all that time. But when he got back home, he began to talk with this young Moravian. And he didn't understand faith. John Wesley looked after Peter and some of his friends while they was in London. Now, Peter was about 10 years younger than John Wesley. And he spoke very little English, and Wesley spoke very little German. So they found themselves in the middle uh, speaking Latin. Wesley continued um, to confide in Bowler that he was thinking about giving up on preaching because he had no faith. He says, and, and I quote, I need faith that will give me three things. Peace. And the face, face of death. Now why would he say that? Because when he was on the boat. 
He was afraid that he was going to die, but the Moravians, they just were still praising God and happy. Isn't it amazing? Some people will be praising God while others are in total fear. And, and he found him. He said, he said, hold, hold, hold up. Why are you guys praising God? He said, because God will take care of us whether we live or whether we die. It's all in his hands and we don't have to worry about it. He says, number two, um, preach, preaching faith. He says, I, 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 I can't wrap my mind around this because I don't have the joy that the Moravians have. Now, he's Anglican, but have you ever looked at another denomination and you say, well, we don't have what they have. And if you desire what someone else has, go get it. Yes. Hello, somebody. Yes. It's not about denominations, but it's about Jesus the Christ. Yes. Whether you're Baptist, Methodist, Pentecostal, it really doesn't matter, Catholic. I don't care what denomination you are as long as you put your focus on Jesus the Christ. Yes. Thirdly, he says, I don't have victory over sin. Now, this bothered me because he's an Anglican priest. And have you ever been in a position whereby you felt inadequate, even though you were the leader? And I think I heard uh, someone say this in a uh, men's Bible study yesterday, that you don't, you'll see who... The, the people are that have faith because they're, they'll be first to go to the front line. But the guys that act like they're so big, they want to get in the back. You, you see, because you haven't achieved. Paul says the same thing. He says, I count not myself to have apprehended. Can somebody say apprehended? He, he says, I count not, I don't care what it looks like, what adversities have come, I don't count myself to be high up on the ladder because it's all the grace of God you see people are going to talk about you no matter what Paul was killing Christians and this same Paul God allowed to work, uh, write a third of the New Testament Jesus came he suffered he died and now you send a message through a heathen or what you consider a heathen God, when we call him a heathen God says he's a saint isn't it amazing that sometimes we are not what it looks like? Amen. Bowler told Wesley he could have that kind of faith that he sought after and that he could have it instantaneously. But first, he must put aside all this philosophy and just come as a little child and ask Christ to save him. Sometimes we're too analytical that we can't see God. This is the leader of Methodism. The man that started all of this stuff around the world and, and it began to spread in, in China and it began to spread in America and Africa and, and, the, and all of these things beginning to happen and this man himself is not sure about his own faith. Then the Holy Spirit, can somebody say Holy Ghost? <laughs> oh my God. You see, oftentimes in church services, we like to omit the Holy Spirit. Hmm. You see, but the Holy Ghost is real. The Holy Spirit, now you say, well, what does the Holy Spirit really do? The Holy Spirit leads, it guides, it directs. Once you become saved, the Holy Spirit comes in as a, a little embryo. And, and, and as you grow in Christ, the Holy Spirit grows in you. Yes, it does. And you begin to have what I would like to call an encounter with God. We may have been in church all our lives, but some of us have never had a true encounter with God. It's called the Holy Ghost. It's called the Holy Spirit. I, I know that the, when you say Holy Ghost or Holy Spirit, it's sort of foreign to some people. Don't bring all of that to me. No, the Holy Spirit is real. The Bible says that, that God the Father, what does God do? God, what the, God gives the gifts. Jesus the Christ, he makes sure the gifts work. By the finished works on the cross. And the Holy Spirit says... I have a job too. I'm coming on in there because I'm going to lead God and direct you. I'm going to give you 
a word when you don't even think there is a word. I'm going to bring things to your remembrance. The Holy Spirit has a job in your life. So Boy told him, he says, then the Holy Spirit will give you the assurance that you're seeking. Ah, the Holy Spirit. Wrestler's reply was, and I quote, never have I heard such a thing like this in my life. Bowler encouraged him to read his Bible. And he said to, to, to a man who, who taught the Bible at Oxford, the teacher he have to teach, the guy with no degree, the, the, the guy that just happened to be around, he's telling the professor, read your Bible. Wesley did uh, a study on the book of Acts looking for a conversion story and he discovered that Acts was full of conversions. Wesley said, I see it in the Bible, but that was way back then. Listen at this little faith. I don't see it today. Bowler said, I can bring 10 people within an hour who can testify to the faith. Five people came and gave their witness. Wesley said, that's enough. I see that it can happen today, but how can it happen to me? Stop by to let you know on today, if you want to know how something spiritual can happen to you today, you got to keep pressing. Oh, yeah. oh God. And I'm, we're going to talk about what it means to press. I only need a few minutes. Paul, when he says, I count not myself to have apprehended. Indulge me for a moment. I don't think I prayed. Lord, thank you for your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Uh, indulge me for a moment. When you... Don't count yourself to be high on the ladder. It brings about a certain vulnerability that says to the people who admired him and really looked up to him, he says, I'm not there yet. I don't know why you come in here looking so holy and sanctimonious when the guy that wrote the book says, I'm not there yet. Uh, if I had some true witnesses, you would say with me, I'm not there yet. This is a journey. This allows Christians to be honest. You said, well, pastor, I was born into the church. Maybe true. I was, you know, Methodist all my life. That may be true. <laughs> but how many of us know that we could have been born in the church, but we're still jacked up? Yeah. I'm talking about the founder of Methodism. He says, I was born into ministry. I, my father was a pastor, and my mother taught... 19 children and, and, and we sat around the table and we learned the Bible but this same guy says I'm not there yet. Whenever you think you are so accomplished, whenever you get to a certain height, how many of us know that when you get to the top there's another top? God is saying to us on today Poke your chest in. Stop acting like you have it all together. Because if the guy that wrote the book that we read about and study about, if he says, I'm not there yet, you're not either. And neither am I. From the pulpit to the back door, we are still growing in God's grace. Can I get a witness in the building? I count not myself to have apprehended. Ah. Oh, God, this, this, this brings me to a place in my own life when people expect you to be something or give something that you can't be or give. 
That's why it's hard to, te to tell people to give something that they don't have the ability to give. You can't give something you don't possess. You can't give love. Oh, I just need you to love me this way. No, if, if you don't have it in your heart to give it, there's no way it's going to work. Can I get a witness, Sister Bennett? You can't give what you don't have. If God has given it to you, then you can give it away. You're trying to pull something out of me that's not there. And so many of us have allowed others to pull on us and pull on us. And we spend years with a mask on. And it's all right to say, you know what? I'm not there yet. I just look at your neighbor and say, I'm not there yet. I'm not there yet. It doesn't matter what you think I should be or how I should act. I'm not there yet. I got out of the car. Uptown New Orleans, Third Ward. And um, I was talking trash on the basketball court. And the uh, guy looked at me. He said, you're the pastor. You can't be talking like that. You know what I had to tell him? I'm not there yet. <laughs> Just not there yet. <laughs> I'm still talking trash. Because God have given me something. Uh, you know, this is for competitive people. Some of us are just competitive. A few months ago, I couldn't run up and down the court anymore. I'm playing full court now. Why do I tell you that? Because I, had to, I played basketball and I had to walk up the court. Didn't have the legs no, anymore to, to run. But today I can play five or six games full court. And I'm just happy about it. And, 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 and you know, I, I see myself. You know, when you used to dunk in a basketball, I still see myself doing it, but you know, I looked at myself, I said, I'm not there yet. I can't go back. I can't do that anymore. The Bible says, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Uh, can I take my time with this? There's some things in life we cannot control. And... It's out of our control, and we spend so many days of our lives trying to fulfill a role or something that somebody has set out for us. That's why it's important to spend time in prayer and figure out for yourself what God has given you. And then if you live up to that, God will be glorified. I don't care how people look at it. They, you know, they're going to be horrified anyway because... They don't have the answer. God has the answer. I'm running after God because God has the playbook. Amen. And not you. Some husbands do it to wives and wives do it to husbands and relationships do it to other relationships. I, 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 they press so hard for you to do something and be something that you're not. I think I'm in the right place on today. So Paul... This guy that explains the New Testament, he says, I count not myself to have apprehended. And I wondered before he start talking about forgetting, forgetting, somebody say forgetting those things which are behind me. Paul is not saying I want you to forget everything. He's saying that I want you to forget the things that's causing a roadblock. I want you to forget the things that's causing the distractions. I want you to forget the things that's stopping you from glorifying your God. He says, that's what I'm forgetting. I'm putting all that stuff behind me. The Bible's Paul says there's no condemnation. I know you keep talking about in your little private circles. Well, you know he used to kill Christians. Paul said, yeah, I did all of that. But I'm forgetting those things that are behind me and I'm pressing toward the prize for the high calling in Jesus Christ. I have to press my way through. So if I'm going to press my way through, I, I think I gave you two already of uh, my points. Point number one, align your goals with God's goal for your life. Now this is a hard task. Align your goals with God's goals for your life. If you're going to be a presser, you say, well, how 
What did, does it mean to press on? That means that I'm going to not press according to society, but I'm going to press according to, to God's will for my life. Yeah. You say, well, how do I do that? You put your ear to his voice. You say, well, Reverend, I hear you say that every week, but how do you really do that? And I try to tell you year after year after year, you're going to have to spend some more time in his word. You're going to have to spend some more time in prayer. You're going to have to make a sacrifices unto him. The church today, this generation of Christians are probably the less sacrificial of giving God glory. I'm not talking about resources because we are good at giving God resources, but I'm talking about giving of our heart. Right. Sacrificing unto God right. what God desires and not what society desires. So Lord, what would you have me do? That should be your prayer every day. Lord, what would you have me to do today? Because I need your will to align, my will to align with your will. I press means to take hold of. God grabbed hold of Paul because he had a purpose for Paul's life. Can I go deeper? Secondly, you have to answer the question, what does it mean to press on? Look at verse uh, 13, uh, but I do not consider myself apprehended, but when I, Paul in many things is going on in his life. He have a lot, and, and we have a lot of things going on in our lives, and you say, I'm just too busy to do what you're doing, but don't you know God have given me the same 24 he's given you? It depends on what we do with it. Have you found yourself playing Facebook games two and three hours a day? Hello, somebody. Oh, y'all not going to be real with me. Hey, have you found yourself watching more television than ever before? I know it's been a dark season since this pandemic, but have you found yourself doing things and we're just, I'm not going to say wasting time, we're allowing time to pass. But those same things, you said, well, I, I would do more, but I can't. Yes, you can. You have the time to do it. You know, you don't even have to read the Bible anymore. You can pull out your cell phone and press play. And, and somebody from around the world will read it to you. Yeah. And, 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 you know, you can get through the entire Bible in two or three months because you're just letting it read and read. And you don't even have to follow it in your Bible. You can just let it read to you all day. Say, ooh, I got through 20, 20 chapters today. How so? Somebody read it to me. You see, there's no excuse as to why we are in the same place year after year because we have not dedicated and sacrificed our best efforts to God. Can I get a witness? Oh, it's so hard to keep focused when there's so many distractions and things to do. But Paul says, I got to forget some things. You, you know, I used to entertain you guys talking about me. I used to do all these things. But he says, I, I got to move beyond this. And, and my next point is that we have to move into what I call, we must operate in purposeful living. What's your purpose? And, and you, you may want to write this down when you get home. Why did God create me? What's my purpose for living? And, and, and if you cannot answer that question, just keep seeking God. What did God really call me to do? And, and he don't call everybody to the same thing. He may have called just a little woman that sits in the way in the back of the church and all she do is pray for people. And, and you know, that's a calling. That, that's an anointing on her life to be able to pray for someone else. I'm not saying you have to be up front. I'm not saying that you have to be at the top. Whatever God has called you to do, do it. Do your job and do it well. Thirdly, I told you I'm not there yet, but I left the station. Paul is saying, I'm not there yet, but I did get on the train. I'm not there yet, but I am pushing forward to get there. And, and, and you know, because Paul says some things uh, through his letters that, that really disturb my spirit. Paul says, I want to know you, Jesus, so much. I want to know you in your suffering. I said, Jesus, 
He says, I want, I want to know what it feels like. And you know, I really said, Paul, I'm not there yet. <laughs> you, you know, I don't need to know what it feels like. <laughs> Paul says, I want to know you that much. So he sacrificed his life. And I, I want to just tell you today in closing that if you're not there yet, it's okay. But just make sure you leave the station. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. If you're here today, you don't know the, the Lord Jesus in the pardon of your sins. Send a man, send a woman, send a boy, send a girl. You can come to the Lord on today. You can come via a Christian experience. You've been in the church, but now you need to be in the kingdom. The doors of the church are open. You may be on social media. You say, I want to get to know this Jesus. I'm tired of being outside. You can come on in on today. You may not be on the top, but how many of us know that average? If you're average, you're on the bottom half. You're on the bottom half. You're just on the bottom half. God says, I want to take you higher. I want to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all you can ask or think. God says, I want to give that to you today. If that's you, you can come to the altar. Give me your hand, but give God your heart. Secondly, if you're here today and you say, well, I'm saved. And, and I'm on my way to heaven, but, you know, I can do better. I, I fell out of the ark of safety, and I want to come back. I'm a backslider. I admit it today. God says, I'm married to the backslider. Send a man, send a woman. It doesn't matter, boy or girl. He says, I'm here, and I'm married to you. Give me your heart again. Thirdly, if you're here today or, or watching by social media, and you says, I want to join this church. I can grow and be nurtured on this side of heaven. I want to grow with the church, and if that's you on today, you can join. You can join the church. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There's an anointing right now. I feel the power of God. You see, God, the devil will try and hold you um, in your seat like crazy glue, and, and he will try to distract you and say, not yet. But God is saying, this is your day. This is your opportunity to come to me. If you can be nurtured over here, the doors of the church are open for you. Lastly, if you desire the fullness of God's Holy Spirit, God will give you the desires of your heart. I lift you up. I magnify your name. That's why my heart. Come on, lift your voices. Do you love him all today? Such a special way. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I praise you, God. I lift you up. I magnify. Magnify your name. Hallelujah. I told uh, Cheryl she had to rejoin the church. <laughs> Amen. But I was playing. Amen. What's your desire for God on today?
it's good to come back home to the Lord. Amen. She said, pray for my family. You see, our heart is in the right place. And we want to tell God, thank you for your spirit of coming and standing in the gap. You see, some of us, some more of us need to stand in the gap and allow the power of God to work through us. In the mighty name of Jesus, be blessed, my sister. Amen. Amen. Come on, put those hands together and give God praise. Church, say amen. amen. You know, Calvin Bill's favorite saying was, press on. But Calvin never really told us how to press on. So I thought I would answer that question on today. Amen. I thank God for his spirit still lives in and around this place. It's communion time. If you would, um, look in your bulletins to Holy Communion, the invitation. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sins and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sins before God and one another. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Let us offer one another signs of reconciliation and love. Even during this pandemic, just wave at your neighbor. Amen. The peace of God be with you. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and, and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father, almighty creator of heaven and earth. And so with the people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join in the unending hymn. Are you and blessed is your son Jesus Christ by the baptism of his suffering death and resurrection you gave birth to your church deliver, delivered us from slavery uh, to sin and death and made us a new covenant by water and the spirit on the night in which you gave in, in which he gave himself to uh, for us he took bread gave thanks to you broke the bread gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many, I'm sorry, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty ask in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving 
as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts, the bread and wine. Make them be for us uh, the, blood, the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one in Christ, one with each other and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. And now with the confidence of children of God, let us pray. Church, say amen. amen. You can take your communion out now. And we're going to take it together. When you have it open, you can say amen. amen. You're still trying, say wait. Now, we don't have two weeks <laughs> to get it open. You have it? On the night in which Jesus was betrayed, he took bread. He gave thanks to God in heaven. He broke it. He gave it to his disciples. He said, take, eat. This is my body. That was broken for you. In like manner, he took the cup, gave thanks to God in heaven. He gave it to his disciples. He said, Take it, drink ye all of it. This is my blood that was shed for you. As often as you do this, you do it in remembrance of me. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen.
Church, say amen. amen. It's offering time. Amen. No, right now, the Lord, right now, no, right now, woke me up this morning. Started me. For those that are watching online and you desire to share in this great experience of giving back to God what he have given to us, you can um, text your amount to 225-500-2023. That's 225-500-2023. It takes about two minutes to set up and about two or three seconds after that. You also can give on the website um, www dot wesleybr.com or you can give via cash app dollar sign wesley umc br amen your gifts are appreciated shall we stand visitors in the house on today. Amen. Good to have you, woman of God. Uh, you can tell us uh, who you are and um, your church home is any and uh, good to have you today.
Amen. Yes. Amen. Amen. So good to have you. Your pastor was here last week. Amen. So you're not alone. Amen. Good to have you. Amen. Come on, put your hands together for our visitor. Amen. Everybody else is at home today. Dr. Rook, you have your hand up. Okay. Oh, you're speaking. Okay. All right, now we're going to have uh, Dr. Joyce O'Rourke come with the announcements. Okay, we're going to have, before the announcements, we're going to have the birthday celebrations. Okay. Sir er Albert Hill. We got you, we got you. Good morning, everybody. We remember the person we lost thus far this year that was born in April. Miss Betty Lou Johnson, April the 17th. Now on the screen, we will have uh, the memos that's passed before. Screen, please. Okay then. Well. April 4th, we had Vivian Walker. Emotion, April 10th, Emotion Mike Knight. April 11th, East, Easter Fulton and Sadie Hayes. April 12th, Dorothy Bird and Ophelia Jones. April 13th, Thelma Davis, Julia Tyson. April 17th, Terry Benton and Betty Johnson. April 18th, Thelma Johnson. April 21st, Villanova Smith. April 24th, Connie Smith. April 29th, Virgil Jones. And now we have the uh, members who are still with us. On April the 2nd, would you, uh, when I call your name, would you please stand, please? We have Sydney Pelche. April the 3rd, Kelly Hansberry and her son, Brendan Hansberry II. April the 5th, April Bayham. April 6th, Ollie Sweetwine. April 7th, Donovan Allen. April 9th, Nigel Raven. April 11th, Peyton Burdett and yours truly. April 15th, Nayla Brown. April 15th, Elijah Sweetwine. April 17, Patricia Palmer. April 1st, April 18, Marilyn Brown. April 19, Timothy Brown. April 20, Miona McQuarters. April 21st, Clance Jones. Yeah. April 21st, Amaja McQuarter. April 29th, Dexter Bailey. Naomi Bill and Connor Chamlin. Okay, normally at this time, the person who was in the birthday, they would tell you some information about the month of April and all that. But we have agreed that the birth, that we're going to dedicate our uh, month to the children of Ukraine. Uh, a little over four months ago, they didn't want to see on television, they had this uh, on the news, they had this little boy walking by himself, nobody close to him, about 30 to 40 feet. He was about six or seven years old. Did anybody see that? Am I? Okay. This kid, six or seven years old, walking by himself, had a little teddy bear or some stuffed animal in the left hand, and he was crying while he was walking. 
He could have sit down along the sidewalk, on the, on the street. He didn't do it. He kept moving. Yeah. Uh, some of us should uh, learn something from that. He kept going on. We don't know what happened to his parents or what. But the story behind that for me is that it's time to move on. If you're at home watching this program virtually, it's time to move on. It's time to come back to church. That's all I have to say. Thank you. Church, say amen. amen. We do have one person online that says, Happy and blessed birthday to my awesome gift from God, my son, Kerwin J. LaFrance. Blessing, son, love, mom. Amen. Happy birthday, April Seller. Amen. Um, happy heavenly birthday to my mother, Thelma Johnson. Um, rest in peace. Amen. That's from Janice Pitcher. Amen. Then, Christian friends, we invite you to note in your bulletin the list of persons among us in our church family who are in need of calls, special prayers, or the like. And if you know our list to be incomplete, please pass on that information to the church office. And in that regard, please note, too, the protocol that applies here at Wesley if the matters are of finance that need verification of the like, they should be submitted by Wednesday of each week. And if we are trying to schedule meetings of any sort, those are supposedly to be scheduled through the church so as to avoid conflicts. And you see other of our matters of protocol. More than that, we would like to offer that our work week ahead of us is a full one. There's to be a full, I mean, a Good Friday choir rehearsal Monday from 6 to 8. On Wednesday, the Bible study on Facebook Live is set for 6 p.m. On Thursday, the male chorus will rehearse at 5.30 p.m. And the combined choir will be rehearsing 6.30 p.m. on Thursday as well. A joint Good Friday service is to be held here at Wesley, April 15th, please make note, 10 a.m. And there are other matters of concern in print here for us, and we hope that you will make note of all of them more as well to come relative to our Founders Day observance. Much of what we are talking about is in our bulletin but we would like to have it reiterated shortly. We'd like to make note that our outreach ministry is busy, busy at work, and donated most recently 100 pairs of socks to the homeless. And a special thanks to all of our church family persons who did provide donations. And finally, from the announcements that I have, dear members of Wesley, this reads, on behalf of the Curry family, we thank you for the care and attention given our family during Gordon's transition. Wesley Church will always remain a special part of our family or family's history. Thanks again, sincerely, the Curry family. And now I would like to invite a member of the Founders Day Committee to come and address you as we do press on toward the date, May 15th. And again, if there are persons who are still interested in joining our committee, let it be known that we welcome you. Mrs. Baker. Good morning. I have been voluntold to give some information about the Founders Day for this year. <laughs> First, I'd like to read a scripture to you. It's from Matthew 16th chapter, verses 13 through 19. And this will only take about 20 minutes, my talk. <laughs> 
Now, when Jesus came into the parts of Caesarea, Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Who do men say that the Son of Man is? And they said, Some say John the Baptist, some Elijah, and others Jeremiah, one of the prophets. He saith unto them, But who say ye that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon, bar Jonah, for flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee, but my Father who is in heaven. And I also say unto thee, Thou art Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades shall not prevail against it. I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And so, from the Reverend Hardy Ryan to the Reverend Frederick Sweetwine, Wesley has stood the test of time on this rock. Wesley was founded in 1866. In 1882, a wooden structure was destroyed by a storm, but the members rebuilt. In 1885, it was destroyed by fire, and once more, they built. But they built a brick structure, and this building was damaged by a storm in 1909, and they repaired it. But in 1965, Hurricane Betsy did set severe damage to the structure, oh, yeah. and the members decided, Wesley needs a new building. Mm -hmm. In 1967, the present structure that we stand on today was dedicated in the, on the same plot of land. Growth and change has been a part of Wesley's history. It was first known as Wesley Chapter Chapel Methodist Episcopal Church. Then it was known as Wesley Methodist Church. And now we are known as Wesley United Methodist Church. What started as outside services has grown into a highly technology equipped facility. Wesley United Methodist Church, like that tree that stands planted by the water, shall not be moved. Right. We encourage you to join us on May 15, 2022 at 10 a.m. to celebrate 150 years of service to the Baton Rouge community. Our guest speaker will be Dr. Leonard L. Haynes III. Dr. Haynes, along with his siblings, were active members of Wesley's youth group during, during their father's ministry. <coughs> Dr. Haynes, or Leonard as I call him, has a vast experience in the educational community and throughout the United States. He has offered his counsel to numerous organizations. He has appeared in Who's Who in America and Who's Who in Black America. Dr. Haynes is the recipient of nine honorary degrees. Wesley continues to thrive because of its members' generous tithes and offerings. This year, as usual, we ask that each adult member, each adult member give $156 above their tithes. And we do not want to leave out the youth and the children. So we have asked the youth to give $15.60. Now y'all know y'all spend more than that on designer jeans and shoes, so you can come up with $15.60. And the children, five to 12, we're asking $1.56. That's candy. If you choose to prorate your giving, you can start paying today. Just place it in an envelope and write Founders Day. We uh, will also have a souvenir book. If you would like to place an ad, the deadline is April 30th. You may either call the church for pricing or look in your bulletin of today. Mark your calendar for May 15, 2022, 10 o'clock a.m. Invite your neighbors, invite your friends, invite that man on the street. I hope to see you there. Thank you. Praise 
Amen. We can clap for Evelyn. I mean, sometimes we'd be in church and we say, should I clap or not? No, let's give her a hand. Amen. We thank God for you. Rem Mallard, anything else from you? Any other announcements before the church? Shall we stand and go down from this place? Receive your benediction. We thank you for allowing us to press on. Good days, bad days. We thank you, Lord, that you've given us the instructions on how to press. Now we pray, God, that for those that haven't pressed, oh God, we pray that they now leave the station. We pray out of us what you've intrinsically placed in us we give you glory in Jesus name. Amen. 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 amen amen God my feet oh Lord